Hi, and welcome to another presentation on fractions. So we're going to do a bunch of sample problems to get used to the idea of how to manipulate fractions and how to really think about them. Uh, so this first problem asks a very simple question. It's uh, maybe not so simple. But here we have a, a, a polygon. This, this polygon has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's a, it's a decagon. Uh, and it's asking how many, uh, what fraction of this decagon is actually colored? Um, I believe it's a decagon. So uh, how would you figure that out? Well, it looks like this decagon is divided up into a bunch of triangles. Uh, so first, how many different triangles are there? It's always worth kind of writing that out explicitly just to get a sense. Let me kind of write that out. So there's this one triangle here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So there are ten triangles, there are ten equal sized triangles. And now which of these are actually colored? Well, it looks like three of these triangles are actually colored. Let me let me label these three. So this is this one. One, two, three of these triangles are actually colored in. And so that would mean that three out of 10 equal sized triangles are colored in. And so the fraction that represents the color region is 3 tenths. Okay, hopefully that made sense to you. So three regions were colored in out of 10 equal sized regions. And, and it's very important to remember they have to be equal sized regions for us to think of it as a fraction. And if one of these regions is bigger, it will be disproportional. So we really have to make sure that you're dealing with equal size regions when you talk about fractions. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Let me now move on to another question. Uh, it's a very similar one. So what portion of, of, uh, of this triangle here is actually colored? So let's talk about this triangle here. This, this triangle um, is, is a big triangle, and this big triangle is divided up into a bunch of smaller triangles. Which portion of this big triangle is actually colored in? So again, let's let's count this out. So we have a number of uh, small triangles here. So there's one up on this row, and then there's one, two, three on this row, and then one, two, three, four, five on this row, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this row. So how many different triangles do we have here? So one plus three plus 5, plus 7. And let's see if we can figure that out. That's 1 plus 3 is 4. We add 5 more to get 9. We add 7 more to that to get 16. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 is equal to 16. So we have 16 small triangles. Which ones of these are actually colored in red? Uh, so let's, let's uh, use a different color to specify that. So there's this triangle right here. 1, two, three, four, five, six small triangles are colored in red. And so we have six triangles that are colored out of 16 possible. And again, it's important to note that these triangles are all equal sized. Uh, some of them are upside down, some of them right side up, but ultimately they're all the same size. They're just, they just have different orientations. They're just in different directions, but they all have the same size. Okay, so six sixteenths of these triangles are colored. Okay, are you ready for another problem? Let's do one other problem. Okay, and again it's similar. What fraction is actually colored the shape on the right? So again, let, let's count out how many different, this is a shape that's composed of a number of squares, and let's assume these squares are all about the same size, and I tried to draw it that way, but I'm, I'm not a perfect artist by any means. Let's count that out. So we have uh, one square that's on the top row, one, two, three squares in the second row, one, two, three, four, five squares in the third row, one, two, three squares in the fourth row, and then just one square in the fifth row. So let's count that out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 13 total squares what fraction of these total squares are colored in? 
but let's use another color to specify that. So we have uh, this square on top, that's one, two, this is colored, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight of these 13 squares are colored in. Uh, and so the fraction that's actually colored is eight over 13 or eight thirteenths. So eight thirteenths of this shape is colored in. Okay, we have 13 squares total and eight of them are colored. Okay. Now we'll try another problem. Let's try a slightly different kind of problem. This problem asks, which fraction is bigger? One third or one fourth? Okay, and, and let me actually talk about how you can figure that out. Um, so imagine we had, we had a circle. I'm going to draw two circles, and here's the first circle. Okay, and I'm going to try to draw another circle about the same size. Okay. So imagine we have two circles of the same size. And the first circle, I'm going to divide the first circle up into three equal regions. So let's try to divide this up into three equal regions. So And imagine these are about three roughly equal regions. So there's one region here, one here, and one here. Okay, and one third represents one of these regions. Let me kind of color that in for you. And I'll choose a nice yellow bright color to color that in. And actually, I'm going to color it in a way so you can kind of see the different regions. So I'm going to color one of these three regions in. And I'll try the same thing with the other circle. So let me, at this circle, we're looking interested in one third versus one fourth. And so to figure out what one fourth looks like, we have to take this circle and divide it up into four equal size regions, not one, two, or three, but four equal size regions. And now we have region one, region two, region three, and region four. Okay, and let's color in one of those regions to get one fourth. So I'm going to color in about this region right here. Okay, and as you can start to see, the region that I'm coloring in represents one fourth of this circle. And given these circles are the same, approximately the same size, these two circles are approximately the same size, coloring in one region out of four on this circle seems to be smaller, seems to be a smaller amount of area than coloring in one region out of three in this comparable size circle. And so that would seem to imply that one fourth is in fact smaller than one third. And remember this is the, uh, or equivalently one third is greater than one fourth. And the greater than sign, remember you always want the, the open part of the sign, the kind of mouth facing the, the bigger quantity. Now this might seem confusing at first. You might be saying, well, you know, how can one third be, be bigger than one fourth? I mean, there's a three here, and there's a four here. Isn't, isn't four bigger than three? How is it possible that one third should be bigger than one fourth? Well, remember, one third means you're taking one piece out of three equal size pieces, and, and those three equal size pieces will be bigger on average than if you were to take the same uh, circle and divide it into four equal size pieces. So, for example, if I took a, a piece of uh, a slice of pizza, or a pizza pie rather, and divided that pizza pie up into three uh, slices, then those slices each would be bigger than if I took that same pie and divided it up into four slices and gave you just one of those slices. Right? So if, for example, let me give you a more extreme example. Imagine I, I took a pizza pie and I divided it up into, into 10 slices and gave you one of those 10 slices. That would be a much smaller amount of pizza than if I took that pizza pie and divided it into two you know, big halves and gave you one of those halves. Okay. So in general, whenever you see uh, anything of the form kind of one third versus one fourth, it's the smaller number. When, the sm when you have a smaller number on the bottom, the resulting fraction is usually bigger. Okay. And we'll do one more problem before I close out this video. Okay. So the last problem is a range in order from smallest to largest, one half, one fourth, and one sixth. So let's try that. And I'm going to try that. I'm going to draw maybe squares this time to kind of 
give you a picture. So imagine I have uh, a rectangle rather. So imagine I have this, this rectangle. I'll draw three instances of the rectangle and we'll try to make them again about the same size so you can more clearly see what's going on. So here's first rectangle, second rectangle, and the third rectangle. Imagine these are about the same size. Yeah, I'm not a perfect artist here, but this is pretty close, I hope. And so let's, let's divide up these rectangles up into, into different regions. So the first rectangle, we want to represent one half, so we'll divide that rectangle up into two equal sized halves. The second rectangle will be one fourth, so it'll be four equal size regions. And third rectangle will be one sixth, and so we want to kind of divide it up into uh, six equal size regions, and this is kind of about six regions right here. Okay. Let's write that out. So let, let, let's actually color some some of these regions in, so we get a better sense of, of what's bigger. So uh, let me pick a nice color. How about this blue color? Let's color this in. So the first rectangle. I'm going to just color it in blue here. Okay, there's the first region. Okay, the second rectangle, I'm going to color in also. And I'll do the same with the, with the third rectangle. I'm going to color one box out of six in. Okay, so we have that the, the first rectangle, we have a color. We have one half being represented in this rectangle. The second rectangle represents one fourth. Okay. The first one represents one half, the second represents one fourth. And the third, rec the third rectangle, we've shaded in one sixth. Okay, now, if you kind of inspect this visually, you'll, you'll notice that one sixth, this region is the smallest region of these three. And so one sixth is the smallest of these three fractions. Okay. The second biggest region is right here, the one fourth region. Okay. And the third biggest region is the one half region. Okay. And, th and this region is in fact the biggest of all three. So in, in order, from smallest to largest, we have one sixth followed by one fourth followed by one half. And again, you might be confused and you might be saying to yourself, it's really funny, how come how come one sixth is the smallest? Isn't six the biggest number of all these three? How can one sixth be smaller than one fourth? And how can one sixth be smaller than one half? And again, it's important to remember that in the context of fractions, what we're talking about is if I took something and divided it up into, into many pieces and gave you one of those pieces, you would have a smaller quantity than if I took that same object and divided it into a small number of pieces and gave you one of those, one of those pieces. Okay, so when you divide things up, uh, what you in turn get is that the that the that the the bigger number at the bottom means you're getting a smaller quantity when it comes to, to dealing with a fraction. And uh, just to talk about some nomenclature with fractions quickly at the end of this video, uh, this number at the bottom we call that the denominator of the fraction. We use a different color to talk about the denominator. So that's the denominator right here. Okay, and the the top part of the fraction. The one in this case, the, the number on top, we call that number the numerator. Okay. Oops. The numerator. Okay. And so when you have the same numerator, in this case we have the same numerator in three instances, it's one, then the smallest fraction will be the one with the biggest denominator. So in this case, the denominator is six and here it's four and here's two, uh, the biggest denominator of these three is the number six. So when we have the same numerator, the numerator one, with the denominator of six, that's going to be smaller as a fraction uh, than uh, a numerator of one and a denominator of four, which in turn will be smaller than if you have a numerator of one and a denominator of two. Okay, hopefully that made a lot of sense to you or made some sense at the very least. And look forward to doing some more videos on fractions. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.